So what do you do, ladies and gentlemen, when you have all these factors? If you do not have graphing technology, you're going to have to determine on your own which one of these are going to be your factors or your zeros. And it's like, where do you start, right? Well, pretty much on your test, you're not going to have one that's going to be this long, all right? You will have one that's going to be easier with less factors or less zeros. But what I, all I wanted you guys to do on your homework was to write down your p over q. And then what we need to do is determine your zeros. So what we use is graphing technology. And that's going to help you out. If you don't have graphing technology, my, big, my um, recommendation would to start with plus or minus 1. So then do maybe plus or minus 8 or plus or minus 2. Start with the easy whole numbers, right? But however, when I graph it, um, I don't have the whole idea of what the graph looks like. But I, my graph looks something like this. All right? And I know that each one of these are actually my zeros. So what I do is I kind of zoom in. And even though my calculator is going to be fairly correct, it looks like I have a 0 at negative 2 and at positive 3. So it looks like those are my zeros. I don't know for sure. I can go and use the you know, zero function on my calculator to verify. But what I want to do is, to show my work, I'm going to verify using synthetic division. So first of all, are negative 2 and positive 3 possible zeros of this function? Yes, they are. So that's good, right? That means at least that's why we do the rational zero test, to make sure they're even possible for us to use. So I'm going to write all this out real quick. So let's use synthetic division for 3. So I do 3. We got 9, negative 9, negative 58, 4, and 24. Bring down the 9. 9 times 3 is going to be uh, 27. Uh, negative 9 plus 27 is going to be 18. 3 times 18 is going to be 36. It's going to be 54. Negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is going to be negative 12 which is going to give you a negative 8. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24, remainder 0. So when we have a negative, when we have a remainder of 0, that tells us what? A That's a 0, right? And x minus 3 then is a factor, right? right. Yes? Yeah. OK, so we use, our graphing, um, we use our graphing technology to help us determine a 0. Otherwise, you would have to guess and check out of all these. I don't want you to be doing that. That's why the graphing technology is so helpful for you guys to be able to determine. However, we have, have we found out all the zeros yet? No. no. However, I did tell you that negative 2 also looked like 1. So what I can do is I can go and see if negative 2 works. So now I'm going to use synthetic division again. But remember, I can use my former result to test it. So bring down 27. Positive 24. Wait, no. no. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Where am I? Well, yeah, I the wrote down one. the wrong ones. I was looking at the wrong line. Positive. 9, 18, negative 4, negative 8. Take the result. So I don't know what I was doing. 9. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. Add them up, you get 0. 0 times negative 2 is 0. Negative 4 t plus 0 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is going to be a positive 8 bring them down in 0. So again, I got another remainder 0. Does that tell me negative 2 is a 0? Yes. yes, it does, right? So now I have a remainder 0. So that's my 0. Here's my constant. And then here's my x linear, here's my x linear term. And here's my squared term. So how do I write? So, so far, my factors are going to be, I have x minus 3 x plus 2 and x squared, 0x, let's see, minus 4. Then what I can do is I can break this up as what we're going to do. We're going to learn today how to break them up into um, all of our linear factors, of our linear factorization. So then I'm going to break this up into my final answer is x minus 3 times x minus 2. What am I doing? x plus 2. And then this becomes 
Remember, you take add 4 to the other side if you're going to set this equal to 0. I'm kind of skipping ahead now because we've done this. Add 4 to the other side, square root, you get plus or minus 0. So I have x minus 2, x plus 2. Then you guys can notice this is x plus 2 squared. That means it's going to have a multiplicity of what? Right? So actually, my graph, even though I didn't really check it, this means actually it rebounds at x plus 2. So that means that at, I'm sorry, at, um, at, uh, at x plus 2, we have a multiplicity of 2. So this 0, which is actually um, negative 2, it actually rebounds. So my zeros for this function are going to be 3, negative 2, and 2. All right? Um, and so I don't understand right. how you got x squared minus 4. x squared minus 4. I factored this out again. Oh, okay. oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No wonder. I was like, what the heck happened? <sighs> it's not x squared. It's 9x squared. Thank you. Jeez, Monday. Oh, it's a Friday, right? 9x squared minus 4. Thank you. I was, like, I was looking at that. I'm like, you know what? I remember my graph. I remember this. Was, I don't remember there being a, a hold. So my apologies. It's 9x squared minus 4, right? Does everybody see what I have? I, that's your coefficient, right? So it's actually plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Anybody? Three. 2 over 3. 9 x squared minus 4 equals 0. Add 4 to the other side. 9 x squared equals 4. Divide by 9. Divide by 9. x squared equals 4 over 9. Root root x equals plus or minus 2 over 3. Yep. Right? So we can write this as x minus 3, sorry, x plus 2, parenthesis goes the other way, times x minus 2 thirds, times x plus 2 thirds. Then we can write the zeros, because that's what I was asking, are going to be 3, negative 2, and plus or minus 2 thirds. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Sorry, thank you for calling me out on that. We're good? Mm -hmm. Yes, OK. So ladies and gentlemen, that's what you 